What's up, Sideline Sports Network Nation? Andrew Banster here, joined by a very, very special guest. It's the head coach at Texas A&M, Corpus Christi, for their basketball team. It is head coach Steve Lutz. We're really, really happy to be joined by you today, and we appreciate your time, Coach. No problem, Andrew. Thanks for having me. Of course, of course. So, so we mentioned that right now you're you're about to start your first head coaching season at Texas A&M, Corpus Christi. Let's start right there. So, of course, we'll get to kind of your track record and the the pedigree of your resume, which is certainly up there with tons of NCAA tournament experience and things of that nature. But let's start with this first head coaching season. What challenges has that brought and what kind of excitement has that brought? Man, uh, the challenges, I mean, they're new every day. You know, today, probably on the tip of my tongue is going to be COVID. Um, you know, where are we, where are we headed? What are going to be our protocols? Um, how can I best protect our team and our program? Um, you know, our, our league came out with the policy, much like the NFL, that if you don't field a team because of COVID, there will be no um, reschedules. You're just going to have a, a, a forfeit. And, um, you know, so you, you've just got so many different things and variables that you're trying to contend with. Um, it just makes for an interesting day. But, you know, the general is just that we've signed 11 new players. And so how are we going to get those guys to mesh and come together and, you know, become a team? It's uh, you've got 11 new ones, but then you've got three returners and you've got another guy who's a walk on. And, you know, how do you get those guys to function as one? and uh, all pull in the same direction in, in terms of trying to win the Southland Conference title and, and the Southland Conference tournament title and then get to the NCAA tournament. And, you know, certainly all of those things are, are extremely difficult in and of themselves in a, in a normal year. But, you know, as you mentioned, COVID makes all of those things exponentially, you know, more challenging. So let's talk about one of your other coaching positions before you got to Texas, Texas A&M Corpus Christi. At Creighton, and this is something that intrigued me because I grew up in Des Moines, Iowa, so I went to Drake games and watched Creighton, and I knew all about uh, Dougie D growing up. So that's certainly something that intrigued me, and I, and I read one of his quotes kind of praising Texas A&M Corpus Christi's decision to bring you aboard. So, you know, talk about your time at Creighton and then coaching somebody like a, a Doug McDermott and, and all of the other, you know, good talent that came through there. And, you know, truly that's a school that, um, up until up recently wasn't was certainly a mid-major in the MVC and you guys were able to time and time again you know contend with some of the best of the nation and how does that experience kind of bring you into a, a better position coming into uh, Corpus Christi well first of all I mean Creighton is a fabulous institution so irregardless of, of basketball and being able to play in front of 18,000 fans every night um, you know, it's a place you'd want to send your child to get an education. So um, you always have that um, as a feather in your cap. But then just from a basketball standpoint, I mean, it's, you know, it was my first, probably my first um, look at just big time basketball where people love it. They care about it. They bleed um, with you. They live and die for it. And, um, you know, it's just a neat, neat place. You know, we obviously were faced with going from the Missouri Valley into the Big East. Um, you know, luckily, as you, you kind of talked about, we had Doug for four years and he ends up being the, uh, you know, national player of the year in our first year in the Big East. So that that helped us tremendously. But then, you know, the year after that, we took a little step back um, and we had some transfers and, and guys that were we're sitting out for us and then we're able to to pull it back together and, and become another, you know, top 25 team again. So, um, but just kind of to answer your question about Doug, I mean, phenomenal kid, phenomenal player, uh, not a guy that spends six hours in the gym every day. He's a guy that comes to the gym and he works his tail off for an hour and a half, two hours, and then he gets out of there. So he, he compartmentalizes or he, you know, he's organized with his day and his approach and uh, he absolutely maximizes every minute in the gym. And then, you know, maybe goes and relaxes or plays video games or, or goes plays around a golf. So he's, he's very uh, smart about he, how he utilizes his time. 
Yeah, Doug's always somebody that's that's very much intrigued me, as I mentioned, you know, being from Iowa and there's not a ton of NBA guys from Iowa. Um, so, you know, and of course, another great connection in, in Kyle Korver. Um, I, I know that was before you were there, but, um, you know, just very intriguing to me. But you know, let's move on to your time at Purdue, four straight NCAA tournaments, including an Elite Eight and one of the most electric tournament runs I've ever seen. And in, in that Carson Edwards game, as I'm going to call it, um, another guy that had glowing remarks about you when you um, were brought on at Texas A&M Corpus Christi, which, which again goes to say, you know, a lot about you and who you are as a coach. But talk about your time at Purdue and kind of how that um, affected your career and what that gave you coming into this new head coaching position. Well, again, I mean, I, I went from um one really good academic institution to another. Um, but you go from a private to a public university where, you know, I don't even remember exactly, but I think Creighton was probably eight, 9,000 at the time in terms of enrollment. And you go to Purdue and it's, you know, 60,000 or whatever we were, we might even be 45, but whatever. I mean, it's phenomenal. And you, you, the university is just so much larger um, you know, obviously you don't have football at Creighton and you go to, to Big Ten football at Purdue. You have Jeff Brom who comes in and, and, and does a fantastic job and wins. Um, you know, so it's, it's, a, it's another layer of college athletics. Um, and, you know, the Power Five and the Big Ten and everything that it's all cracked up to be, man, it opens your eyes to a, to a whole other world. Um, but, you know, again, I, I worked for a, a great person in, in Matt Painter, um, really good basketball coach, really good basketball person. Um, and, you know, I was lucky because I walked in and, and we had a fantastic team my very first year. And you talk about the run we made to the Elite Eight. That first year's team probably had the most talent Um of any of the four years I was there. It's very similar to the team that they, they're they going to have this year. Um, but, you know, we had a, a, an injury in the first round of the NCAA tournament, you know, to a 7 two, 300 pounder, and that changes things. Um, but, you know, you also talk about the run that we had that third year with Carson. I mean, he was fantastic in the NCAA tournament. So you just can't, you can't account for any of those changes, right? You can't account for Carson going on to tear. You can't account, account for Isaac getting, uh, getting hurt. You just have to adjust with it. But uh, both great places and, uh, you know, both of them very much shaped me in terms of, uh, you know, being ready to become a head coach. So when we talk about, you know, we've certainly talked about your upcoming experience and about your previous experience, which lends the question to, to many of the people that, that watch this particular channel that are prospective collegiate athletes, guys that are looking to get to that next level. And, and I think especially kind of in the culture that we find ourselves in when it comes to high school athletics, where it's so commercialized and it's so um, oftentimes there's, there's the recruiting services that say, we give you all this money and, and we'll get you to that next level. But I always find it really important in conversations like this one to, to ask the people that are actually those decision makers, you know, what are the things that you're looking for in, in young basketball players and what are some piece of, pieces of advice that are generally missed? And that's, that's a, an interesting question. And I just went through this process with my daughter who was a high school senior last year and, and she's now playing college soccer. Um, and it, the first answer never changes. Like if you don't have good grades, we don't waste our time with you. So, I mean, first and foremost, um, you've got to do what you need to in, in the classroom. And, uh, you know, if you can make A's and B's, that's certainly going to be a separator between a guy that was making B's, C's and D's. Um, so, you know, when you're on the fringe like that um, of being, you know, maybe a division two or a low major or a mid major guy, the separator, it, it's grades, it's character. Um, it's how you, you know, how much you love the game. It's, uh, you know, how hard you play. Do you play 
um, every possession like it's your last possession, or do you just kind of coast when it's a, a lesser team? I mean, all of those things matter. Um, and, you know, how do you, how do you handle it when your coach rips your butt for missing a defensive assignment and he chews you out? Do you sulk on the bench or do you look like, look him in the eye? Like, you know, you're going to be required to do in college and, uh, take it and then go back out and, and try and prove him wrong that, you know, that won't happen again. Um, it, being a good teammate is, is more important than you being able to shoot from 25 feet versus 18 feet. It just is. Um, because the longer that um, I do this, and, and I would say that as things continue to evolve in college athletics um, with social media and, and just uh, people expressing their views, none of us want to have problems. None of us want to have issues. Um, so we're going to recruit good people. And, uh, you know, maybe they're a little less talented, but I would take a little less talented player who's going to give me 110% every single day um, versus the guy who, who doesn't want to come to practice and just thinks that he can show up to the game and get us 25. So, so then my very last question, I don't want to take up too much of your time, and I, I appreciate the time you gave me. Um, my, my very last question would be, so let's say we're talking about a, let's say a prospective junior that, that has good grades and is a, a maybe a D1, D2 borderline guy, um, but he doesn't quite know what steps to take, right? So um, he, he's been to the showcases. He just doesn't know what, what are the right steps to take, right? So this is all hypothetical. What might be some good suggestions for anybody in that general type of situation um, to take in order to make it to that next level? Yeah, and I'd first, I'd say go to your high school coach and uh, most most programs across the country use some sort of film exchange, like a huddle. Um, and, you know, your high school coach can make you a highlight tape. And you know what, if you don't have a high school coach that knows how to do it, or there's not an assistant coach, it's not that hard. I mean, you can do it yourself. We, you know, I made a tape as I, as I, you know, talked about a little bit, I made a tape with my daughter. You just got to take the time to do it. So make yourself a highlight tape, then get a couple of your better games and uh, do the same with your AU guys. You know, if you played AU um, and then after that, what I'd tell you to do is I'd tell you to figure out, OK. I'm I'm being looked at at this level and I'm going to use my example as uh, coming out of high school as the example. I wanted to play at. The University of Texas, why well, wasn't that good? You know who was recruiting me was St. Edwards and Texas Lutheran. Well, if those guys are recruiting you, then that's probably who you should kind of focus on. That's not to say you shouldn't attack a dream school or two, but focus on those schools. Do they have your major? Do they have a good culture? Do you like the coaches? Do you like the campus? Because there's no reason you can't just go to the campus and walk around, especially if it, you know, if it's within driving distance. But then once you figure out, okay, hey, I think this might be a fit for me. Email those coaches, send them your highlight video, send them some game tape and be persistent because unfortunately, and this is no excuse on any coach's uh, part, but unfortunately we get a lot of those emails every day and it's hard to watch them all. So be persistent. Um, try to arrange a visit, see if they'll let you come watch practice. Um, you know, you've got to recruit the, the university a little bit at times as well, unfortunately, especially if, you know, you're, you're looking at like division two schools where they're not going to offer you a full scholarship. You know, when you're getting division one, it's either, it's either a full scholarship or nothing. So, um, you know, you've got to do your due diligence and um, attack the process because nobody's going to hand you anything. You know, you, you, you're kind of on that cusp, but like, God, is he, is he the guy that we want? Well, you know, if, if I've got a guy who's right here on this cusp and then I've got another one and this one over here, he, he continually stays in contact with this. He shows that he wants to come to Texas A&M Corpus and this guy's kind of aloof. I'm going with this guy because I want people around me or around our program who, um, you know, want to be here who are invested in, in helping us get to the NCAA tournament, who are interested in getting a degree from Texas A&M Corpus. And if you're not that guy, that's okay. Go somewhere else. You know, not, this is not a fit for everyone. 
And uh, you're not, a, I'd tell the young people, you're, you're not a fit for everywhere. So find your fit and then go with it. But uh, man, don't get caught up in, hey, I need to go play at, at this power five school or this mid-major or this division one. You know, go somewhere where you're going to be around good people. You're going to get a good, good, get a good education. And then you're going to enjoy college and have a good college experience. Um, you know, all of that encompasses um, what you should be thinking about in the big picture, because basketball is not going to last, you know, beyond college, maybe two, three, four, five years for less than 3% of the population, <laughs> right? So that leaves you with another 50, 60 years that you've got to do something with your life other than basketball. And I hate to tell you that or tell people that, but it's just the cold reality. Um, unless you get into coaching, basketball is probably not going to going to be your golden ticket. So, um, you know, get there, enjoy it, win, do the best job you can, give your best, and at the end of the day, let the chips fall where they may. I mean, you're you, you've still got a, a good college education under your belt, and you've got a chance to still go change the world after basketball. Well, well, Coach Lutz, I wish that I would have known a lot of these things right when I was in. When I was in high school, I was uh, I went and played college baseball, but I, I wish I would have known all of those things long before now. And I, I got to say, I really enjoyed, um, you know, talking to you today and, and walking through all these steps of your career. It's something very fascinating to me. And I think uh, all of our fans at Sideline Sports will really appreciate this. So I just wanted to, you know, of course, thank you for your time. And, you know, anytime you want to come do this again, you just let me know. Yeah, anytime I'm, I'm uh, you know, I'm, I'm for helping kids. You know, obviously I want Texas A&M Corpus to succeed, but I want all kids to succeed and, and have a good college experience. Well, thank you so much, man. We really appreciate it. For Coach Lutz, this has been Andrew Banster with Sideline Sports Network. Thank you all so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on our next episode.